Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. We come to the last of our studies on the book of Ephesians. So far we have learned about the blessings and grace, life and love, the church and its leaders. Today we are going to concentrate on spiritual warfare and the armour of God. Our main passage is from Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18. Paul begins this section by reminding the family of God that we are not just called to be saints but soldiers. And in this battle there is no place for conscientious objectors. We must remain diligent and prepared for battle. It's important that we know our enemy, who our enemy is and who it isn't. History is replete with despots, sadists and heartless individuals. Similarly, we know people who antagonise, manipulate and exploit others. On a personal level, we encounter people who are just downright annoying and selfish. Yet Paul has to remind us that they are not the enemy. They are just people like you and me, sinners in the need of a saviour. No, the real enemy is the devil and his evil hordes. We are wasting our time fighting people when we ought to be standing against the devil who seeks to control and to destroy everything in his path. We are dealing with formidable forces that are hell-bent on making our lives a misery and rendering God's power that is in us ineffective. Jesus says, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. We cannot overcome the enemy on our own strength. Be strong in the Lord. Our only way out of this battle is to fight it on God's terms with God's strength. Our strength is not on our own resources and abilities or how much we know the Bible or in how long we have been a Christian or even how long we have been in ministry. Our strength is in our present day-to-day -day union with Jesus. He is the captain of our faith. Things were not going well for King David and we read that his men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Trying to associate the Roman military dress with what Paul was saying might seem somewhat outdated in our modern thinking. Perhaps a better modern metaphor might be a policeman fully kitted out in his riot gear, with head protection, bulletproof vest, shield and baton. In actual fact, we often assume Paul's description here is of a Roman soldier. But it's more probable he was referring to Isaiah 59 verse 12. He put on righteousness as his breastplate, the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in a zeal as in a clock. In many ways, the whole armour of God is a picture of Jesus. He is the truth. He is our righteousness. He is our peace. His faithfulness makes our faith possible. He is our salvation and he is the word of God. Paul has already told us to clothe ourselves with Christ. So effectively we are being told to embrace Jesus every day and every moment. He is our strength. The belt of truth. We are to live a truthful life. This is not just about telling the truth, but living with integrity and sincerity. However, it's not just about what we do, but also about what we believe. Jesus says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Ultimately, what we believe shapes what we do and who we are. The breastplate of righteousness. We are called to live righteously. That means doing what we know to be right. 
It means treating people right and making right decisions. All these right attributes just stem from the fact that Christ is our righteousness. Feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel. Solomon says that he who wins souls is wise. Isaiah exclaims, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. The shield of faith. To protect us from the fiery darts of the evil one. Fiery darts are any thought or action that is contrary to the love of God, the life of God or the word of God. It is anything that shifts my mood or emotions away from the joy of the Lord or anything that undermines my confidence in him. The helm of salvation is my heavenly assurance that I am a child of God and that no, no one or no thing can take that away. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and I believe that God has raised him from the dead. The sword of the Spirit. God's word is our offensive weapon, supplied by the Spirit. Scripture rightly understood and correctly proclaimed. If that is done, it turns back evil, it destroys strongholds, it rescues people from darkness, and it brings eternal life. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and keep on praying. Prayer is the conduit of God's power that we so desperately need if we are to remain standing in the time of battle. Prayer should be as natural as the air that we breathe and just as important. Prayer should be so much more than a shopping list or a crisis hotline. Rather, a living, dynamic interaction between a father and a child. To pray effectively means that we must want what God wants. Prayer is inviting God's kingdom to envelop our world. Martin Luther, the great reformer, rem reminds us that prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but laying hold of his willingness. Prayer is not about getting things, but getting God. Learning to communicate with God should be a deep and enriching experience but often it has been reduced to an act of duty that if we are not careful can lead to frustration and resentment. To pray in the spirit is not necessarily talking in tongues, but engaging with the empowering presence of God. It is realising that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly realms. Chapter 1. It is known that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Chapter 2. It has been assured that he is able to do far more abundantly than all that we could ask or think. Chapter 3. That he has equipped the saints for the work of the ministry. Chapter 4. It is known that he loves us and gave himself up for us. Chapter 5. And it has been strong in his mighty strength. Chapter 6. Albert Einstein was asked once by a student what was left in the world for original dissertation research. Einstein's reply was, find out more about prayer. This is the air that I breathe. This is the air that I breathe, your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread, your very words spoken to me. And I am desperate for you, and I am lost without you. This is the air that I breathe. Thank you, and God bless.